um, it, it, we're open to ideas. If someone has, uh, if, if um, Jason, were you mentioning, uh, were we talking on Instagram about the idea of like um, making it a little more uh, uh, formal where, where everyone was working on solving the same type of problem or something like that? Yeah, a little bit more focused down. Yeah. And we could always do something along those lines. One thing that I think is pretty helpful uh, if, if, you know, we're all drawing for, for the upcoming week and uh, uh, one thing that I think is kind of helpful is whenever you, you know, you're kind of stuck on something or you have multiple ideas and you can't uh, pin down what you want to, what you want to do, uh, just throwing it out there for the, you know, for the group, for the community to, to chip in and, and help. We've been doing that on our find your style group on, uh, uh, on Monday evenings, uh, where, where we have specific assignments, but, uh, a lot of times people are coming in and there's always, there's already something on their mind, like that they're working on the outside of the assignment that we've given them. And, you know, they maybe they're struggling with a layout or something like that for that week. And there's only like six of us in that group, but, uh, uh, we, um, you know, we'll sit down and kind of find a way to all kind of chime in and see if we can help solve the problem for that for that drawing for that week uh sometimes just getting a fresh perspective on something really uh uh really helps so we could always kind of go that that direction with it too it'd be, it'd be nice just to get feedback from people and you know if, if people just want to sit and talk and work on their own projects or w watch someone else draw while they're working on their own projects that's cool uh, if you want to try to make it a little more formal the one thing uh, gabe guy is on on monday nights he's doing the kind of super structured like specific assignment solving a specific problem right yeah and just for the canon or for the official record of uh, anything from my end about this was definitely coming from his uh ideas and insistence he was like you know envisioning people doing their homework together and talking like mm -hmm. they you know might have at the tattoo studio you know yeah. before hours it's something that he always does and um you know, if we hit it like an hour later, then he might be in his uh, gazebo sipping tea and help and joining in a little more. But um, yeah, he's also yeah. doing the painting night. So they were all painting until the wee hours last night. Yeah, yeah. I missed that. How, how, how did that go? Was, that, was it a landscape or a seascape or something last night? Yeah, it was landscape theme, but a, a couple of different people uh, beamed in with what they were working on. Uh, mm -hmm. Leo out from New Mexico, uh, he, he's been uh, catching these now. He beamed in. Yeah. I don't know if you know Leo. He's like an illustrator type. I maybe so. Maybe we've done. Has he been on something? Maybe that that, that we've both worked on. I feel like maybe he's been on either a I'm critique sure. or something that we've done before. I'm uh, sure. I don't know if he's beamed in yet, but uh, he's definitely been to like real world events. Yeah, uh, exactly. like the art retreats. Again, he's a painter illustrator type. So they, yeah, so they all got to talk illustrators last night and a little bit of yeah. the. You know, Michelangelo was he an illustrator, or a painter, right? You know, he was yeah, yeah, painter for hire. Yeah, uh, um, that's cool. Yeah, I tuned in and out. Sandy had that one, so I uh, I watched it, made sure everything was cool. But then um, I'm either up early or up late, and sometimes I'm up both. And point being, uh, yeah, sometimes both. Um, what we can do if people so are... this can go as far away like this is a group you know ideally guys vision is to have as many cool drawing groups as people want to lead in whatever mm -hmm. flavor they want yeah yeah it's a great idea I, I i'll tell you what while while we're talking about it if you want i'll i'll share i'll do a screen share just so we're not just looking at people because i am working on a specific uh specific project this morning uh that is let's see did that work Damn. uh I'm working on a specific project this morning. It's an existing piece, but I, I kind of painted myself into a corner a little bit on it. It, um, it's this kind of, it, it's, it's just started. We just started color here. I'll kind of show you, uh, as we go around, this is the side, this is the, it, the last, uh, value kind of session that goes around the side. The client was pretty specific on how he wanted the piece to flow. He has a full sleeve on his right arm. And he wanted to kind of connect to that at the top and then just sweep down the left side of his back and rib cage and a little bit onto his left deltoid. So he was pretty specific about what, about the shape that it took and about what the, uh, you know, obviously what the subject matter is. Uh, this is some type of character that it's crazy. It's, it's a recurring kind of dream or nightmare that he's had since he was a kid with this person and this like, kind of like, kind of faceless, you know, dark shadowed person with this long kind of a, 
yellow coat. It reminded me of that movie from the 90s, I Know What You Did Last Summer, or whenever he was uh, first telling me about it. I don't know if you remember that movie. But, um, uh, but, uh, but we did it kind of like walking with this creature kind of walking along this dock. That it was kind of leaving chaos behind her and, and she's carrying this lamp. And uh, I, I decided to throw these little like figures in the lamp, these kind of souls in the lamp. But I mean, uh, one thing that I, that I did, I was just doing a rough kind of color block in with it. This is kind of, this is what it really looks like at the end of the first color session. Uh, and, but I wanted to get a nice glow from that, from that lantern. Uh, but I, but the coat being all yellow, I had kind of scrubbed in just that straight yellow. And I realized that that's already pretty bright. So getting that glow coming from the lamp was going to be a little bit challenging. So what I think I'm going to have to do is this is what I started doing last night and this morning. Um, what I think I'm going to have to do is come back and mute these yellows a, a little bit on the outer edges and just have a few intense like maybe just on the base of the of the forearm here have a really intense light and then maybe a little bit more uh you know just on the hands and on the uh on the front of the coat right here uh and then let some of this other yellow kind of mute down a little bit so that i can get that intense kind of glow from the from the lantern so that's kind of what i'm working on this morning the uh, this this appointment's for tomorrow so uh I've got a little time to kind of play with it today and see if I can solve this problem. You know, I always find it interesting just to chime in and give a little bit of uh, my two cents on anything. I always find it interesting every time I see like lanterns, it, it's always, uh, it's always like a yellow orange kind of light coming off of it. I think some of the most interesting pieces I've seen are where people really start to play with the color of the light coming off of the, the light source. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you yeah. are curious, man, maybe you could change the color of the light coming out of the lantern, cast yeah. some uh, reflective light and might give it a little bit of a different dynamic. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can play. You, you tend to want to use those kind of warm tones just so that it looks like it's got that you know, that warm glow and, and usually warmer colors tend to come forward a little bit more. Um, uh, and, and this, I kind of started playing with that a little bit. I, I introduced this kind of pink out of nowhere. My original idea was just to keep this uh, a super uh, simple complementary color scheme with just basically blues and okay. and yellows. But, uh, but I've already kind of gotten away from that. If you look in the, uh, um, you know, I've started to move those blues more into some greens and some areas yeah. and that little like boathouse thing. I've started to lay a lot of color in the old busted uh, wooden slats and stuff like that. So, so it's starting to creep into more color. And that's why I started to introduce this paint. But yeah, that's a good idea. I could always really push the, the glow from the lamp to a completely different color. And then I could bathe that yellow coat in a, in a completely different color of light. Um, that might be a, might be a good way to to deal with it. Yeah, uh, like I said, just my two cents on it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, so I've got a couple more people uh, joining the Zoom. There's uh, just about 100 people throughout all of the networks watching at the moment. Sweet. But uh, Tony is currently connecting from the Mediterranean island, so it's uh, still connecting. And Melissa is late to bed, early to rise for these. Hers, she's working on her tattoo design. She was on the painting last night. Oh, nice. Good deal. Yeah, so that's cool. We got some kind of recurring people that are starting to to jump in on these each week. That's awesome. Uh, I know that a million have been jumping in on them a little bit too the last couple of weeks and maybe a little bit late. And uh, uh, and I think uh, SJ, who's part of our um, uh, Find Your Style group, is uh, uh, was was on it a couple of weeks ago, the last time that we did it. So. It's nice to see familiar yep, folks. Yeah, she's watching. She made you. Okay, what's up, SJ? Yeah, I, I, it's nice to see some of the some familiar people, especially you know doing this uh, you know, each week. If we get more comfortable with each other, I think uh, it just becomes that much more fun, and people can be that much more helpful with each other. Absolutely, and I, I admit I did not text everybody this morning. Uh, the, uh, the last one or two, I like went through for an hour, and I was hitting everybody up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully you, hoping going that forward, you don't the, have to do that. Yeah, I mean, as the app kind of gets through the red tape and happens and the 
all those notifications will happen without me bothering people if I can. Yeah. Six or more. Yeah. Gabe, yeah. a little bit more of a technical question, but there's, is there any way to set it up as like a reoccurring weekly meeting that has like the same meeting number, same meeting link? Yeah, we just need to be careful because if we do that with Zoom, then it, um, as the streaming connection goes out, it's definitely preferable to have like a nice, good, fresh meeting that goes to a nice, good, fresh event so that all of the replays and everything happen kind of uh, on their own events. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, often if you click re recurring on, on one of the two to three to four different technologies that we're using, all of a sudden you're like, why, you know, it, it could cause uh, technology confusion. Um, one thing that we could probably do is, is try to get the link up the day before, a couple of days before, because yeah, I know the last couple of times or each time I've, uh, I've been throwing it up on my Instagram or on the fireside Instagram, like literally an hour or less before the actual, uh, things start. So yeah. Really it's not, I mean, in, in some ways we could send it out to a million people ahead of time, but if they're not paying attention an hour or 10 minutes ahead, then they're not going to tune in. Yeah. But, um, the goal really is I think that link that I sent you to send them to the reinventing community event. Yeah. And so yeah, as soon as we create that, I mean, ultimately the only thing that's stopping us from doing so is we need to finalize the, uh, the buttons. Uh, oh, but gotcha. once we do so, then, you know, ultimately that's got the link to watch. It's got the link to the zoom. If anything gets changed last minute, again, that's the other thing. If we send out a zoom link, and all of a sudden that Zoom event gets weird and corrupted and it's a different Zoom. You know, uh, we just sent out the Zoom link to, you know, 25 people and all yeah, of you know, we have to yeah. send it out again. Gotcha. Um, so oh, having like a, you know, a destination page and ultimately it'll be the event destination page. Um, and yes, yeah. getting it out a week ahead of time, there's no reason why we can't. I mean, we could set up five events ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I just. And we will uh, start in January. <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, Sandy had reached out uh, late, a few days ago asking if I had anything to use as a thumbnail, and then I was I wasn't anywhere near my laptop or any way to grab anything, so I kind of let it slip my mind, and uh, and then I saw she made the post using an existing thumbnail. I was like, ah, so I ran into the studio and just like started opening sketchbooks and taking photos, and I probably sent her a dozen uh, just like sketches to use for stuff going forward. And then as soon as I did it, I was like, why don't I do that for everything? When someone asks for, you know, an image to use for a thumbnail or whatever, like it took, it takes no more time to go through and plan for five weeks in advance than it does just to pick the one for that week. Uh, absolutely. 100%. And it's a, a million times more effective to, to do it ahead. It's just, you know, but ultimately it's, a, you know, time management is, uh, insane right now as I'm trying to, you know, port over the reinventing canon and all the courses and curriculums and the videos to the, to the new platforms. So uh, yeah. whenever I'm like, why are we doing this like regularly every time? I'm like, Oh, because we're spending yeah. an enormous amount of time moving shit over and getting everything tight. That's, you know, right, right. but it is all getting done and shit's getting checked off the list. You know, I might propose if there was a theme, um, we could have making a Monday morning drawing group poster be the theme everyone yeah. comes up with their own variations you know they you know could do a black oh, yeah. or could do a color or whatever it is yeah yeah that might be cool uh and we'd have anywhere between three and six uh images to use to to promote the the group yeah yeah that's a good idea i'm using that for you guys who use photoshop more than than i do this um this brush that I'm using, I don't know why I just noticed that the mixer brush tool, I can't tell exactly what it's doing. I think I choose a color and it mixes with the underlying color a little bit, which I like, but I sometimes it doesn't seem like it's doing that. Sometimes it seems like it doesn't do anything at all. Let's see right now, I'm trying to use it. Colors on that specific layer. Ah, okay. That That's probably what it is. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, that's it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I had to find that out the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I kept, I was like trying to find a way to, I'm trying to uh, change this, uh, this color as it goes up the fingers here. So that the, uh, I'm just testing it. I don't know if I'm actually going to do this or not, but this kind of pink glow on the lower fingers. And I wanted to change it to this kind of blue glow, but it wasn't making that transition. It's because the blues on a different layer. Sweet. All right. 
Uh, what do you, uh, Jason? Do you have anything going? You want to show? I can put oh, yeah. my screen share. Let's see. I'll st I'll stop mine for a minute. I was just trying to have something up so that people weren't just watching us staring at our screens. All right, you're up. Yep. So this is a um, a concept cool. sleeve I'm coming up with to pitch to someone. It's yeah. you know kind of building off of the um, the ideas that I was working on during the last Monday morning drawing session with chrysanthemums. Yeah. Um, you know, just sat down. I've been working on them on and off over the last couple of weeks, and um, you know, finally got one down that I wasn't, you know. I, I was happy with it. I know I still got a little bit more work to do with them. Um, but, you know, it's it's a rough concept sketch that I got going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's got someone of... will pick it up and, you know, grab it. But I've got someone specific I'm trying to pitch it to to see if they're interested, if they don't want it, or if it's not the direction that they're heading. Because this is one of those people that, you know, I've tattooed before, tattooed them plenty of times. And, you know, they gave me that classic line. Oh, just do your thing. I trust you. And it's like, all right, well, that's not really helping. Yeah. Give me some type of direction. Yeah. 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 Well, we've had that, that, that uh, discussion a lot uh, over the years on the, on our show about, uh, you know, first off, just needing someone to be invested uh, in the, in what's going to go on their body for the rest of their lives. And uh, um, something that we've been talking about a lot in the Find Your Style Workshop is how to like really, uh, you know, how to engage people and get them to think kind of outside the box about why they're choosing the imagery that they're choosing uh, and create a story or a flow or like a, a narrative uh, a lot, uh, with them during the consultation so that you can tease out a lot of cool stuff that isn't just, um, you know, I, I want to, you know, a wolf and a, and a lady. It's like, all right, well, what are they doing? What do they have to do with each other? Why do they, why do they exist in the same place? What's the story? Let's come up with like, let's invent a story that goes around them and then we'll find a lot of, a lot of cool uh, elements or an atmosphere, like where are they? Why are they there? What other stuff might be in that in that world, you know? Um, and uh, that, that kind of like engaging people that way uh, early on, I think makes your job so much easier on the back end. And we all, I think we all think we want to, you know, do our own thing, uh, you know, and uh, and you know, just create our own one-off designs and sell them to people. It's like once you really get into it, you really want the people to be invested in what's what they're going to be wearing the rest of their lives. They need to be able to tell that story, you know, as well when they're showing the tattoo off. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, and you know, I'll sit down with people. I use a program called uh, Notes Plus on my iPad every time I go to take notes. Mm -hmm. um, I find it super helpful because I can actually. Well, I'll show you. I'm already sharing my screen. Yeah, uh, Notes Plus. Let me make a note of it. Yeah. So like, this is gonna be the next area that we're working on and it's a nice little side piece, mid thigh up. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I asked her, what are some of the stuff that she saw that she liked? She said she saw a few different images of snakes and flowers that she really liked. So, okay, great. You know, you can add in measurements, you can add in images, um, you know, and I'll write down, uh, you know, just descriptive words. What are they looking for? Something elegant, something feminine. They like bold lines and lots of super dark black shading. Uh, the red notes are actually from the first time they came in to get tattooed and that was their uh, lower left arm from the elbow to the wrist uh, where I was working around some existing tattoos. Um, and this one's gonna be starting from scratch on a totally blank area. So I've got a lot of like room to go with, mm -hmm. but they also said that they were interested in getting a full sleeve on their right arm. So it's like, okay, well, here's a concept. Um, so the drawing I'm working on is a concept for a full sleeve. I already started working on um, their side, which is in a different folder. So this is what I kind of came up with for their side. Mm -hmm. Probably gonna go through and simplify some of the petals a little bit. Um, you know, maybe yeah. take out one or two of them, but you know, came yeah. up with that as a draft based on the photo I took of them, the measurements, you know, snakes and flowers. I sent it to them as a draft. They fell in love with it. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm starting awesome. to think ahead and plan out the next piece. So, so this person, they're thinking that it's, 
it going to be either or, either the piece that you're working, the concept piece for the sleeve or this, or are they looking for multiple pieces with the similar? Oh, they want to do both one? eventually. Okay. They wanted to go with their uh, their hip thigh area next, yeah. um, and then possibly looking into working on a sleeve moving forward after that. Okay. So we'll kind of yeah. see what happens and what they end up going with. Uh, yeah. This piece is definitely going to be next, and then they're just going to keep going from there. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, just man, throwing around ideas for their. I, I told him ahead of time. I'm like, you're gonna get a back piece. We know you're gonna get a back piece. Let's start thinking about that ahead of time. So I already started throwing around different ideas for that. Sweet. Yeah. I like to yeah, plan like, ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I like how that how that uh, thigh piece kind of uh, how the pedals you give the given an opportunity for the pedals to kind of sweep down her thigh. Uh, you could probably add some. Uh, some other vegetation, some leaves or something that swing, you know, or either, uh, either a soft background elements or maybe even that swing in front of an area. There, there's a, a w there you've got a lot of cool, like opportunity for some, for the snake to kind of fall into a few of those petals and then have yeah. drop shadows on another few, you know, uh, in some other areas so that it really like tucks in and out of the flower and stuff. I like the way that the, the concept is awesome. You could really push a few, a, a few elements like, like I said, yeah. establishing like that light source and making sure that the snake kind of like tucks into like some of those petals overlap the snake and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'd probably bring some leaves down around this area. You know, just to yeah. exaggerate that flow a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like I said, this was the initial sketch. There's a little bit more refinement that's got to go into it. Nothing crazy. Um, but that's generally speaking what I'm kind of working yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. What, uh, who else? Let's see. Uh, see who Jake else. Russ Evans says, Good morning, Jake, from uh, uh, the Facebook. What's up, Russ? I haven't talked to him in a little while. He's like, uh, he is a madman with tattoo smart. He, he, Russ told me, uh, I don't know, probably a year or so ago, he's like, We're going to put out a new brush set every week for the next year. And I thought, That's ambitious. And sure as hell, <laughs> he's done it. I don't know yeah, why. I don't know why I doubted it. Six streams too. I haven't seen. I I I saw something pop up about a um a YouTube stream with with someone else that I knew, and I was like, oh, I need to check that out. And I he and did I it. The, uh, BJ Betts was on last night. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Everyone was drawing out a script and whatnot with the script sets. He's done. Yeah. One, uh, I think Mike Chambers was before that. That's what I saw. I saw the one with Mike. I didn't see it, but I saw that one pop up uh, with the. Uh, with Mike Chambers. Sweet. I'll have to jump back on. I, I assume that those are uh, available for replay. Yeah, they're up on the uh, Tattoo Smart YouTube channel. Sweet. Yeah, I'll jump on, jump on and check those out. Um, who else? It looks like there's a few other folks up now. Melissa, I see you're working on something. So this morning I'm working on a piece that's coming up this week. It's a returning client. We did <laughs> a gnarly cover up. Um, he had like some home scratcher type stuff all up and down his forearm. <clears throat> About two years ago, we did some cover up work for him. He's really into skulls and monochromatic um, blues and purples. And so we're just continuing up the arm, this area. Um, it's going to cover, let me pull it up. So he's got two little ditties that we're covering with this portion. What is the, what program are you drawing in? Um, so this is Adobe Sketch. I don't have okay. uh, an iPad yet. This was my jump from um, traditional to digital. Gotcha. What is the tablet? Uh, it's the ta it's the Samsung um, came out last year. It's the six. Oh, okay. It's just a an eleven inch. Gotcha. Um, so this is the bottom section that we did the cover up work in two years ago, and then we've got these mm. two that we're working with. Yeah. So we're just having some fun with yeah. it. Um, yeah. Yeah, pulling that um, that uh, that inner glow kind of thing is a uh, is a fun trick to to play with, for sure. That kind of like getting all that blue light coming from the inside and then kind of deciding how far it kind of bathes out onto the 
you know, in, into the sockets and stuff of the, of the skull. It's yeah. Always... He, uh, he loves like all the, the glowy effects and stuff. Um, he wanted to do uh, some armor type stuff with it. And because of the cover-ups and whatnot, I was having a hard time getting some dynamic in there. And uh, so I started looking at like DNA strands and stuff. It's like, hey, this would be really cool. Um, so that's ultimately what I've kind of fused into these. Uh, yeah. Give it some motion and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Who, uh, we'll see who else. Tony, you're working on, well, so he's just reading. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm just taking reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just doing a little collection for autumn. Um, so I'm, I'm just looking at the seasons birds, you know. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not sure what to, what to like really, to be honest. And you still, you guys still are pretty well locked down. You're not tattooing much yet. Well, uh, we're not locked down here, uh, thankfully, but on the uh, in the rest of the country, yes. Uh, yeah, like I, I'm, I got, I'm quite happy that I can actually leave my home and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as far as tattooing, you're still not doing much tattooing just because the rest no, of the country. No, 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 not really. Because people yeah. here is very close minded minded so in terms of like colorful tattoos and and more elaborate tattoos it's very difficult to engage people um, really? so yeah 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 it's, a, it's quite shitty so well, uh, when people can get on the airplanes again we'll have to uh, pitch the mediterranean island tattoo vacation and yeah get a pretty bird tattoo yeah actually right. i'm in <laughs> i'll sign up yeah absolutely i've been like i've been watching these um I don't know why when I'm drawing, I've been, I, just, I watch more YouTube than anything now, but I watch this, uh, this couple, uh, their channel is called Del, uh, SV Delos, D-E-L-O-S. And basically they just sail around the world. It's like they just had a newborn baby and it's a, it's a couple, he was like a um, software engineer or something for some years. And then, and then he bought a sailboat and now they just sail the world and, uh, and they're all funded by a Patreon and stuff like that. And I've just been, they're like, there's no drama or anything on their channel. So I just kind of hang out and it's in the background while I'm drawing. And I, I, would, I was thinking the other day, I was like, I could totally pull off this same thing with, uh, with Fireside with um, just uh, with, with a sailboat and, uh, and a small tattoo setup and just mm -hmm. go to these small islands and, uh, you know, tattoo uh, based on uh, whatever uh, inspiration I found in that area, you know, and just let it all be funded by Patreon. I don't think you it, probably could make a great living doing actually, that. Actually, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, so yeah, now that's now that's on my mind. I don't think I can do it, but somebody should. If some Maybe. if someone else does it, I'll support it. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Still down with the inspiring tours idea, Jake. The yeah, uh, small yeah. groups doing really amazing things and recording it. And but, yeah, you but know, yeah, we, we, we for, uh, yeah we didn't really put that out much, but but a year I guess it's been longer than that. A couple of years ago. Uh, well before COVID, Gabe and I were talking about doing this inspiring tours and we looked at renting this, this castle in Tuscany uh, and we, uh, we were trying to find a couple of leaders for it to kind of uh, 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 like a, a tattooer and an illustrator or something like that. And uh, it's probably for the best that we didn't plan it because by the time it would have happened, it would have been right in the smack that middle, the smack, yeah, middle of COVID. Yeah, in the middle of Tuscany. In you know, we Tuscany. thought about maybe going down to south america too as a yeah as a first step but yeah i was I some that, of those i was having to convince emily of you were coming up with some some wild like going to india and all these things and uh my wife was not down with the really exotic ones i was having to i was having to play the middleman in that in that conversation it's a crazy world but yeah. it all exists yeah. yeah tattoo the tattoo scene in india is pretty crazy although so is covid at this point but uh they're doing yeah. like an online tattoo convention and or online tattoo competition, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this is completely off topic, but I was just, uh, I was looking down at the, I was making a note of um, uh, whatever you do, uh, of, of about notes plus, and I, I wrote it on a sheet of paper this morning. One of the reasons I was a little bit slow getting on here, I was just looking at everyone's like Cyber Monday, Black Friday things. Uh, and uh, I was gonna buy some ink sets. And if you buy right now, I'm just throwing this out there. This has nothing to do with, with me or you or Fireside, but 
Solid Ink has uh, like a 15 or 20 percent off thing. And I was looking at buying two of their 60 set, like 60 ink sets. It comes out to eight dollars and fifty cents a bottle for a two ounce bottle. If you do that, it's like it's one hundred and twenty. If, if I buy two of those, it's one hundred and twenty uh, two ounce bottles for a thousand and twenty four dollars. That's a pretty good deal. I think I might yeah, do that whenever we get off of here. Yeah, uh, and Eternal had a similar deal. They're like twenty five percent off, but their sets are enough are, are so much more expensive that the trade off isn't quite as it, it, they it, they come out to like almost $12 a bottle instead of $8 and 55 cents. But anyways, I'm not plugging solid ink or anything. I do like them, but, uh, but I was like, man, four or two ounce bottles of ink for like eight and a half dollars. If you're running a shop and you're supplying ink for your artists and you may as well stock up today. Yeah, that's awesome. What, what, if, if I may ask, um, what, what brands do you like? I use all of them. I use Solid Fusion and Eternal uh, mostly. I've been using Empire's uh, Gray Wash sets, uh, but uh, I don't. Um, I'm not very loyal to one. I just grab whatever uh, uh, each time. What about you guys? Industry, all the way. Industry Inc. Yep. I've never even heard of them. Yeah, they're Me neither. Um, they haven't been around for you know all that long, but. Um, or uh, I got to meet the guys that own it and run it. Uh, got to talk to the chemist about it. They're EU certified across the board. So, um, which apparently is pretty difficult to to get. What kind of certified? What, what, they're European certified? Union certification. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, so everything's the same here as if I would buy it in you know anywhere in the EU. Um, really like it. Super vibrant. Uh, you know, just it, it's a little bit thinner in consistency than eternal. And I tend to tattoo like I do, like I tend to paint. So I use a lot of liquid acrylic mm -hmm. and it works fairly similar. A lot of great saturation, but still very, very easy to go in. Hmm. Check that out. G give me the name again. Let me write that down. Industry <laughs> inks. Industry. All right. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really like them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I um, I've told you guys before that uh, Andy Andy Chambers and I are working on uh, doing this find your style thing, and he's got he's been showing some of his like the way he mixes complementaries and stuff like that to get some of these funky kind of weird off tones. And he has a handful of inks by um, uh, oh crap, the South American group uh, Paolo, uh what's the name? What electric? electric ink uh and um he has a handful of of electric ink colors that he's mixing into some other colors to get these really funky off off kind of uh, muted tones that um i've tried to look up and grab and, and, and buy and uh you just can't i don't know why they're they apparently they're the largest supplier in in south america uh but uh you can bar hardly buy them here in the u.s it's really weird everything's sold out hmm yeah. Uh, I was just going to say the uh, industry inks, fellas. I don't. I don't want to misrepresent any details, but they definitely have a long roots in the tattoo ink world too. Yep. Um, so it's like they might be a relatively new company, but they're uh, they've been around it for a while. They've been uh, doing it for a bit. Yeah. And where are they based out of? Uh, right now, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, but they're looking to relocate soon, from what I understand. Hmm. Could be wrong on that, but that was the rumor going around the last time I drove up there and talked to those guys. Hmm. Really great guys, too. Well, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I'll check, the, check that out. Um. Anyone else got any updates on their drawings that they want to share? There you go. Tony's got something found. Got your reference going now, Tony. Yeah, yeah. I just I just made a, a, a bullfinch. I think it's called in English. Yeah, yeah. With uh, some skeleton sort sort of writing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to like uh, warm up my hands, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
do you have do you uh do you do kind of preliminary drawings each day before you before you start working yeah actually Almost. yeah 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 that's that's the best way to then approach it with a more uh well, I don't know. I, I just feel like um, I just feel more dynamic after warming up a little bit, and then I can get to my objectives, you know. Yeah. Designing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I was listening last night to uh, an interview with um, uh, Peter Moorbacher, uh, illustrator, and he was. Um, uh, he just put. He, he's a digital artist, which just does absolutely incredible illustrations and he, and he was uh talking about all the most successful illustrators painters that he knows are are quantity over quality artists and they you know they do a minimum of of a hundred completely finished paintings a, a a year and and many of them like start and finish work every single day and uh and uh so he had this idea you know a lot of times i'll pick something to death and i'll either give up on it never finish it at all because it doesn't go the direction that i like or i'll um uh or i will uh, or it'll take me forever to do because i get so indecisive and i get too caught up in the final result and yeah. um, and uh, he was talking about this idea of uh of like you know you should you should get so good at something that you end up feeling uh feeling guilty about how easy it comes to you and how easy it is for you to put something out every single day that, you know, that, that blows people's minds. And it's, it's not because you're doing anything unique or new all, most of the time. It's because you've done it so much that that, that particular thing has become really easy for you. And then that's yeah. when you, you really start to build and uh, get some interesting ideas. Smart guy, really, really incredible uh, yeah. illustrator. Yeah. I, 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 truly believe that the the real artists they are really hard workers you know like um i think that picasso was the one who says um who said um if you're waiting for in inspiration it better it better catches you working rather than you know sitting on the sofa and smoking right so yeah like yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that I I could I could stand to take that advice for sure. I've got a got a problem with finishing things. I was actually spent I was listening to that Morbacher interview last night while I was cleaning out my studio, and I've just got so many paintings and drawings and things that are stacked all over the place that it was getting to the point that I couldn't walk through here. And uh, and I started going through them, and I was like, what, what what do I do with any of these? I either need to finish finish them or throw them away or like for a second, I was like, well, maybe I'll get some containers and like start storing some of the stuff in the attic. But then I start going through the paintings. And I'm like, why would I store any of these things? Why don't I just commit to finishing something? That would be yeah, better. Yeah, actually. And it's so frustrating to keep um, storing stuff that you will never, it will never find uh, a purpose or something like that. Yeah, I have a, like drawers and drawers full of paintings and stuff like that it's like i should maybe give it away or something because i don't have space left you know yeah <laughs> it's, it's like yeah. I, i'm pretty sure that someone w would be happy to like to take it for me or something rather than me keeping it here you know yeah it's funny i'll have i have you know friends or family or whoever come over like we had some uh a small uh group of people not for thanksgiving but for some holiday or occasion earlier this summer and people were going through the studio and you have all this stuff that's stacked and, and they were asking like, Oh, you know, I love this one. I'd love to be able to take this or I'd love to, to have this. And, and I get, uh, I get like almost offended because it's not finished. Like I, I can't let that leave here. And then you're going to hang it up thinking that it's finished and, and showing it to other people and, uh, and saying <laughs> that it's finished and, and, uh, and it's obviously not it'd be embarrassing, yeah. but it's like, well, what, what am I going to do with it? Otherwise, why don't I just give it to them? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so frustrating, you know. Even Philip Blue says that um, it's quite shit to paint because you never know when to stop, you know. Yeah. Even yeah. if it, it looks finished, it, it might it might not be. It would never be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I was listening to a podcast the other day. I think it was called Art Bound. A um, couple of people that were on there, very well-known gallery artists, um, 
I think one person was part of Oil Painters of America. Uh, and they, they made a comment. Uh, they said it actually takes two people to finish a painting. One person to do the painting and the other person to tell them when to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And yeah. so it, it really does bring up the question of when is something finished? Yeah. Finished yeah. when you think it's finished, or is it finished when someone else thinks it's finished? I, um, I, years ago, I, I took this uh, workshop, a week long workshop with Casey Baugh. And, you know, of course, 30 minutes into his, he, into his, um, uh, you know, portrait studies or whatever, they look awesome and painterly and completely done, but he painted on it this one for like three more hours. I actually own it. I bought it. Uh, where is it? I think, it's, I think it's in the other room. Uh, it's beautiful though. The, and, but I, um, uh, uh, but I asked him while he was working on it when I thought it had been finished forever. I was like, how do you know when your paintings are finished? And he like sits there for a second and he was like, I guess when nothing bugs me about them anymore. I was like, holy shit, I would never finish anything if enough, if I waited until nothing bugged me about it. Right. Which, there you go. I don't finish anything. Uh, Morning, guys. Morning, guy. Morning, guy. How are you? Doing good. I fell asleep in the middle of last night's paint session. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dad life. Uh, so I'm going to hop on it now. And... Uh, I know that you've only got another 20 minutes or so before you got to run off and work out, but uh, yeah, yeah, please drop in and say hey. Yeah, absolutely, man. You guys, hey, I'm I'm doing great. I uh, I'm I'm doing a little uh, prep work for a tattoo for tomorrow, an existing piece that I need to that I didn't think out quite far enough or plan quite well enough, and I'm trying to uh, trying to make some decisions after the fact. Which uh, I end up doing a little bit too often, I, but that's where. So what? Trust in. What is it about it that made you decide that you hadn't planned far enough? Um, I I missed. I got caught up in one idea, uh, and that was the the color of this kind of rain jacket. Uh, this is a specific. This client had um, has this reoccurring dream about this person, this lo elongated figure, then this yellow coat. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, I really wanted to create a, a, a super nice glow, deep uh, or like a bright, warm glow from this lantern. And I had gone through and I'd scrubbed in all these bright yellows in the jacket, which kind of like jumped forward. And then whenever I was, I was I'm, I'm going to tackle this lantern tomorrow. And uh, I was like, oh, I've already got all these bright light colors. So I need to come back and neutralize a lot of those a little bit so that I can intensify the glow from this lantern. And I just didn't. Uh, you know, I, I guess I was thinking most of this as an underpainting anyways, you know, just kind of like a flat bed of color throughout that coat. But if I had it to do over again, I probably would have muted the coat a little more on the front end or pushed my value study a little bit further, used more grays in the coat. When I did the value study, or not value study, when I did all the, the, the black and gray on this piece, before I started color, I left the figure pretty well. I think I've got a photo of it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, see, I left the coat pretty well open in a lot of areas when I did the first kind of scrub in. And so um, uh, I probably would have pushed that a little bit further, or I should have pushed that a little bit further. And, and uh, so, that, so that the light that was casting from the, from the lantern uh, had a, you know, it, where it was really clear where that light was actually going to hit and sit. So I don't know if this is just because of the Zoom call. I'm able to see you, but not your drawing. And oh, I sorry. I, yeah, yeah. No, I, here, let me, uh, let me, let me, I would, I'd stop sharing my screen. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, I thought, sorry, I, have, I, f I keep forgetting. Uh, not everyone. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now. Okay. So the way that it actually sits right now, the, let me see. Okay. So that's what, that was the end of the first color session right there. Uh, sure. uh, and so I'm trying to, that, so there's so much yellow in that coat and I want to kind of get that. I, I want the lantern to glow. So I'm going to have to mute the coat down just a little bit. And then what I was showing there for a second, that's, that's the side of it that doesn't show much. Uh, yeah, so the, the value, the, the, this was like the healed kind of value study. I just didn't do much in the code. I left it super open because I thought I was going to do most of it with color. But I wish now that I had spent a little more time rendering the code in gray and, and, and even the lantern. So that, see, I started color before I even got much gray work done in the lantern. So I don't know. I got ahead of myself. So Yeah. Well, I mean, the funny thing about glowing effects is 
it looks more lit up the darker you go with surrounding stuff right right and i think that that's a kind of a counterintuitive thought you know oh, i need to use more darks to make the glow effect better but uh you know immediately just by darkening the lantern itself it already makes the interior of it look a lot more lit up right yeah, but then the yes. coat i think that if you just did much more you know strongly you know identifiable directional lighting on it you know coming from the direction of the lantern uh it would definitely yeah, ha having clearly rendered directional lighting in a, in a piece often is all it takes to uh, uh, make something look luminous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good point, and that's one thing that I'm that I'm missing here is like where that light's actually striking. You know, maybe on the backside of the forearm. Uh, you know, I, I've I've established that a little bit, but then like in the body of the coat or on the shoulder, are really darkening the backside, the the whole you know the whole left side of the. Uh, of the figure in the coat would, would help to kind of show where that light's actually coming from. So, yeah. Right. Or like yeah. the, the hood, you know, the, the front mm -hmm. rim of the hood would be lit up, uh, you know, by the lantern and especially right. to, to the right side a little bit more. But then yeah. as you get farther back, you know, on the hood, you would get into some, uh, some dark uh, shading there. And that, right. that might help to, to pop that light source some. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Definitely. Light sources are tricky though. No doubt, no doubt. I wish oh, I could say that I had a formula for lighting and, and I mean, I've got a bunch of formulas and, and some of them are kind of like what I was describing right now, but none of them work universally, you know, because I find every time I, I'm doing a painting or a tattoo with a, a light source, I have to ask myself, which of my lighting strategies am I going to use, you know? It's like right. there's not one that applies to everything. And... Uh, none of them work perfectly. So it's kind of like, am I applying classic physics or quantum mechanics here? But they don't meet in the middle. It's not like I've figured out a perfect model. Right. Hey, hey, sorry, real quick, Jake, could you yeah. uh, stop the share so we could check out uh, Guy's yes. paint? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Guy, I, I, um, I noticed I was uh, going through and looking at, uh, uh, at a painter I follow uh, on Instagram, and I noticed that you had commented or liked on a couple of uh, a couple of his paintings. I wanted to bring this up. When I was in North Carolina last week, I went to um, a, a gallery where Lynn Bogus ha had an exhibition. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh my God, man, these things were. I mean, I, they they're incredible online. But in, in have you ever seen any of his work in person? I, I've not seen any of it in real life. But I'll tell you what, I. Uh... <laughs> I do a lot of like zooming and staring, you know, like getting yeah. in really close and just staring at it and bringing my daughter over. Look at this. This is a palette knife. In fact, that's part of the reason why she did a palette knife painting last night. But yeah, he's kind of like a, a superhero when it comes to palette knife painting. Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely incredible. And, and, the, and the realism when you just get 10 feet away uh, is, you know, it all comes together so perfectly. And then you step up on it and I, I got some videos I'll try to post and, and share. You step up on it and I would get like at a, you know, at a 45 degree angle to the canvas and literally the paint is hanging in some, you know, in some of these things, the paint, chunks of paint are hanging an inch and a half or more off of the canvas. It's like the most right, impossible yeah, it's, thing it's you've just ever seen. Uh, almost sculpture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really, really impressive. Uh, it looked like it had sold really well. I, I wasn't there for the, I don't even know if they did an opening, uh, you know, it was with COVID and stuff, but it was, uh, uh, but most everything there was, was sold. Which is I'm under nice the impression he moves everything he paints. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, what kind of price tags were those carrying? They were all between 10 and 15,000. And there, a lot of them are, um, are, uh, Oh, pretty big, you know, four by six, five by eight, you know, so, some, and so, yeah, some not quite that big. Some maybe, maybe uh, 24 by, you know, 36, so a, a right. smaller end. But uh, some of them are really, really big. And what's so crazy is he does all of those things uh, in uh, plain air. And so I, I watched a little video of him going out and it's actually on YouTube. If you just search his name, there's a video of him going out in his Jeep with, out in the middle of the woods with a little um, trailer attached to it. And he spends a full day constructing this like platform that's right on the side of a creek so that he has a flat place to stand. He's like driving four by fours into the creek bed and uh, laying out plywood. And then he builds a little structure with a canopy with a, like a, a corrugated aluminum 
that he, uh, you know, that, that's over his head. And then he sets the canvas up and he sets a tent up and he basically spends the second day painting. Uh, and it's huge. I mean, the painting is enormous uh, and he's like out in the middle of the woods doing it. It's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And uh, so he bought this big piece of property in West Virginia so he could just have easy access to all the creek beds that he wanted. It's usually creek beds because you've got that great combination of water and, you know, the, especially in the wintertime, uh, you know, the, the frozen stuff happening on the, uh, along the shore. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's his sweet spot. And so, uh, yeah, he just bought a hundred acres of it to be able to immerse himself in it. Uh, that's really, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, it's nice to see artists succeed on that level, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm sure his gallery is doing really well off of him as well, but uh, yeah, nice to see someone who's that good, not starving. Right, yeah, absolutely. Looks like we got another uh, surprise guest. Who's what we got here? Hello. I can't see yet. Is my audio working? I hear yes. audio. Who we got here? You. Oh, hey, Russ. What's up, man? Hey, guys. Hello. What's up, Russ? Good to How see you. Us. Yeah, good to see you guys, too. How are we doing this morning? Oh, I'm decent. I fell asleep awesome. in the middle of this painting <laughs> last night. Uh, and so I wanted to hop back on before, uh, you know, the live opportunity left us and then uh tonight uh we've got our wave drawing session which i'm excited about because i'm terrible at drawing waves awesome so andre Malcolm, right yeah andre he's a he's a badass so yeah i'm excited about that i could probably um check your instagram and everything but i'll just ask you here what time is the wave drawing session it is uh nine o'clock eastern okay all right i'll try to make it excellent yeah yeah. What's new with you, Russ? Well, this morning I was just uh, just cruising around on Facebook enjoying some coffee and I saw that you were live. And so yeah. I sent Gabe a text to see if I could just jump in. Um, I didn't really plan to draw anything. Yeah. 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 Uh, you don't need to draw anything. I'm happy right. to have you here. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a, I, I haven't seen one of these uh, morning sessions yet. What is the, the general... Uh, the general idea here looks like you've got a few guests that are all working on drawings. That's Mostly, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I have a tattoo drawing to do also, but uh, I kind of just, I left off on this last night and I was unsatisfied with where I left off. So I'm doing that sure. instead, even though I've got a client on Wednesday and, and just rough sketches. But uh, yeah, the idea is we're trying to come up with as many of these kind of live participatory things as we can. Mm -hmm. um, within reason, you know, as, as, and some of them we're, we're trying to find other people to help us host them so we can just have more of them because sure. this winter I think is going to be a big freaking drag for a lot of people. And so having drawing groups and painting groups and, you know, just a sense of community and having something we can do together, even though we can't like, you know, be in the same room as easily. Um, sure. Yeah. That's, that's what we're up to here. Awesome. How many people are you looking to have in each session? Is there uh, like a yeah. cap or... I don't, I don't know what would be too many. I'd, I'd like to find out what's too many. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've had big groups where it just didn't get chaotic at all, where we had, you know, maybe 12 or 15 people on the actual Zoom call. And then, of course, people who are a little shy can also just tune in on uh, Facebook or whatever and just use the chat and still work on a project or what have you. But, uh, yeah, with 10 or 15 people on, everyone was still really respectful and it did not get chaotic perfect yeah. i'd like to know what uh you know it, it, on these morning sessions we've only done a few of these this is maybe the third one and uh uh gabe has mentioned that sometimes there have been you know 100 plus people that are actually watching but not on the zoom call not live drawing with us and i wonder how many people are actually hanging out and drawing and listening and just you know uh uh and what that experience is like as opposed to the people who are actually you know, zooming in and, and sharing their screen and stuff like that. Well, as always, I would ask anyone who is tuned in to uh, hop on the chat real quick. Tell us where you're from and uh, if there's anything in particular that you would love to, to see uh, in terms of activities. We're curious to hear your ideas. Okay, so yeah. real, real quick, we've got uh, hello from Brazil, greetings from California, hello from Luxembourg. 
Nice. What's a GM? It took me a while to figure out. GM is short for good morning. Ah, uh, okay. We've <laughs> got uh, Poland in the house or in the video. Lots of Spanish that I can't speak. Nice. Yeah, that's one thing with it being a morning drawing session for, you know, for us. Uh, I wondered how many people, you know, if it's later in the day, are making time to jump in. Yeah, yeah, we are we are seeing some European uh, participation here. Yeah. Like I wonder how many people have moved from coffee to booze. Yeah. I didn't realize that I was dressing up as Jake Meeks this morning when Man, I put this I, orange saw, beanie on. Right, <laughs> as, soon as, uh, as soon as I saw you, I was like, oh. Yeah, ra ra I never... Yeah, I never wear this thing. I just my hair was crazy because I haven't had a shower yet, you know, and I didn't want to show up on on the screen without it. So here we yeah, are. I knew there was something different about you. I, I don't <laughs> think I've ever seen you in a beard. Oh yeah, before. Russ, I got to show you my COVID beard. Oh yeah, let's see it. <laughs> Boom. Oh my god. It's not. Wow. Right. It's it's not. Okay. Right, right? So I yeah. Shave it off because. When I, I think that's up, I shave off like 15 years, right? So. The white is is such a a good look though, man. Like you you know, you have a white streak coming out of your chin that you you don't you like your your sideburns are still dark. So let's just say that I mean, Michelle is unconvinced. Okay. And, uh, and well, you can let her know that I'm totally convinced and that it stays. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly in in her eyes me just being a lazy slob and uh we, we're having trouble with a light fixture in our bathroom. I know that's a super lame excuse, but it's hard for me to do it properly. Right? Fair. I tried to okay. fix it twice and I can't get the right transformer. So I've got this perfect COVID beard excuse, but that's, that's pretty lame. I think it's, I think it's lovely, face. man. I, I saw Joe Cap has something like that going on too the other day. He was, he was live and had a beard. I've never, never seen either of you guys with a beard that I can recall. This is the most bearded yeah. I've ever been. Which Lovely. is funny because when I was a little kid, I remember taking one of my uh, um, yearbook pictures and just, I was curious, what would I look like with a beard? And I drew this beard on. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to do it. But uh, <laughs> now I'm in my 50s and I'm finally getting around to it. And I'm still not even sure about it. So I, I tried my, my COVID hair idea was to grow long hair. And um uh. I didn't, I didn't make it. I ended up no. having to cut it. Yeah. Like it, it's just too thin on top. You know, yeah. it's just, yeah, uh, that's, that's it's, an unfortunate thing that involuntary mullet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't ever going to work, but now I know for sure. So I can never, never try again, I guess we're done with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we I also have people problem. beaming in from a uh, good job from Amsterdam, uh, love being able to watch from North Carolina. Uh, Johnny V uh, lives in tattoos in Connecticut, and then Anthony is in Texas. Nice, well, thanks for joining us, y'all. And uh, this is uh, happening every Monday morning. And the idea is to bring your tattoo homework, stuff that you're actually gonna be working on um, that week. I mean, that's not what I'm doing right now, obviously, so I'm a terrible spokesperson to the idea. But, uh, you know, tattoo homework session. I'm only working on this because it's still sitting here and I didn't finish it last night. But I actually have tattoo homework I should be working on. Got a sleeve. Broken. Yeah, I've got a sleeve that uh, I, I finished this guy's other sleeve in the, in the summertime. And I just sent him a half dozen rough sketches. And, you know, it's not like I'm giving him a choice. But, you know, when I did the rough sketches, it's kind of like... I didn't have a preference necessarily. I liked all of them. And, you know, if he chooses the worst of all of them, I'll just say, yeah, that's the worst of all of them. So let's not do that. You know, I can, I can be honest <laughs> with people that way, but what I'm really asking for is just a reaction and not necessarily to drawing A, B, C, D, or E, but parts of them, you know, if, if you can point out, oh, I love the elbow area on this one and, and that kind of thing, that helps me a little bit because sometimes with the abstract stuff, there's just so many places you can go with it. It's nice to have uh, a sense of the client's taste, which is sometimes hard to suss out. Yeah. You will also have someone beaming in from Senegal, West Africa. Nice. Oh, I wish I had the tattoo. Uh, I, have it. I never did. So I don't know if we know any African tattooers, but they're watching. Man, that's awesome. So many folks from so many places. 
I am about to beam out so I can go get my exercise. Ah, you got your workout on. session. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go get strong. But uh, I enjoyed it. I, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next week. And um, uh, hopefully uh, hopefully, I've made enough progress here to, to make some improvements on this tattoo tomorrow when I start it. Guy, that piece is looking great. Everyone, Thanks, Russ, man. good to see you, man. Russ, yeah, let's catch up with you, you soon. Yeah. All right, yeah. Take care, Jake. Uh, and, uh, Cheers. And everyone else, yeah. You guys all take it easy. Take care. All right, see you. Thanks, man. So Russ, you've been doing much tattooing? Not a whole lot, no. Yeah. I've uh I've been tattooing something like one, maybe two times a week. Yeah, that's that's me. Yeah. About the same. Which it still feels like a lot when you've got other things going on. It's it's still it's work. And, you know, uh, it's there have been a lot of cancellations, you know, even the the one or two appointments that have a week sometimes don't happen, you know. Right, it's yeah. One thing or another. And you know, of course. We just want to take the most caution and say, yeah, okay, no, no, no penalty on your deposit. Yeah, no worries at all. Like, so. Yeah, I mean, every cancellation I've had lately has been because, oh yeah, one of my coworkers has just mm -hmm. tested positive. It's like, okay, stay home. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, um, at least you, you got a, a busy shop going on there, and uh, you still have Killian there. You got Brandon. You've got. Uh, um, uh, let's see who else is there. Uh, Mr. Perpetual Roots. Uh, pretty good crew. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's a full house and, uh, you know, we're, we're doing good as a shop. So, you know, there's not like a huge need for me to, to be tattooing financially. Um, no, not really because of the shop. I wouldn't say that's a huge profit for me. Um, but I've got a lot going on with tattoo smart too. So between right. the two, it's like there's, there's work to be done no matter what. So I don't need to be tattooing all the time to uh, keep myself busy. So what are some of the, the current exciting tattoo smart things that you've got in, uh, in the, the works right now? Um, well today, like uh, last night we, um, I went live with BJ Betts. And um, we talked about this free holiday greeting card set that we made. It's called Seasons Greetings. And um, it's going live on the site today. It's just uh, 20 different kind of sayings written out, you know, like Seasons Greetings or Joy to the World, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Boxing Day, all that fun stuff. And so it's just like a, a free set to, uh, to help get you inspired to make a custom greeting card. Nice. Um, now, does BJ have That's any kind of uh, uh, a tool set with Tattoo Smart or anything like that? He does. Yeah, we had a set with him about a, a year ago called Penmanship. So it's just a bunch of um, it's a bunch of pre-drawn like individual letters. Like I use the um, the script set quite a bit to just kind of like choose the capital letter that I, I want to try and then um, switch over to the uh, the lowercase letters and arrange them. And he has all these different options. So there's like like if you were writing the word tattoo and you've got those two T's in the middle, he's got an option for two T's that go together and an option uh, for right. two O's that go together. So you can really kind of like internalize that, you know, that design language and kind of stamp it out and arrange it and draw on top. And it, it helps a lot if you're not, you know, so practiced with drawing script. Um, and then there's, there's actual script lettering brushes like brush pens and all these different um, basically copies of, um, of the old dip pens in the set yeah there's so gabe's bringing that set up yeah. so yeah it's on it's on sale right now for cyber monday and uh yeah i mean that's that's the most recent thing i can think of because it's fresh on my mind we were live for two hours last night on the tattoo smart channel talking about all that stuff yeah those, those are such important tools and you know like my own lettering is you know obviously i'm not a lettering specialist and and i look at like at something like that even just a tool set like that and it can take somebody with just general tattoo skills and you can really make good lettering it's a, it's a huge difference yeah it's like you know when you watch bj draw letters it's it's so mesmerizing and fluid you know he just busts everything out in one pass and it looks amazing and then i try to do the same thing and it's an hour of messing with each letter trying to trying to get it to all fit and flow. And, and that's the difference between, you know, specializing and, and doing something, you know, every right. single day over years and just being, you know, more of a, more of a layman and having to, 
kind of, you know, figure it out just for a, one project that you have to do. It's not really in your wheelhouse, you know? Yeah. And uh, you know, what happens is you end up knowing just enough to be able to see that it's not very good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to really work it. Yeah. And that's how you end up with those hours in it. Exactly. Yeah. We, uh, we just, uh, had some lettering done by Sam Taylor. Uh, oh, cool. Super excited about finally the, re the reinventing logo has been redone and we've got that off at our graphic designer right now. And that'll be, uh, hitting the streets in the next couple of days. And, and, uh, you know, I, I've always really enjoyed his approach to lettering where, you know, he throws in some interesting little 3d graphic effects in there mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And, yeah, uh, his, his stuff is so cool. Just got a great character to it. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I know that it's uh, a look that you would appreciate too. It has a little bit of that classic mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing going on uh, with it. So we're, we're yeah. really geeked about that. And, uh, you know, having all the vector graphics and being able to swap out colors and things like that. Pretty exciting. Um, so awesome. yeah, maybe yeah. we should uh, go around the, the cameras with people who are uh, drawn and- Yeah, yeah, let's check out some of the drawings that's going on. Let's see, Melissa, you first. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, so like as I was saying to Jake earlier, yeah, this is um, a continuation. I did a lower forearm cover up, uh, some really, really gnarly stuff about two years ago on this guy. And he's really into the skulls, wanted a full sleeve of them. Um, eventually it'll go on to his back, which is why it comes up into here. Um, and he's got a double cover up through here of some small little bangers. Um, he wanted it like to be more armor esque, but I needed a little bit more dynamic. So I pulled in some like DNA strands and just kind of played with it. He loves it. Uh, I'll be tattooing it later this coming week. Yeah, I like the big movements in that. So that's uh, looking at where it'd be connecting on the upper back. Is that what the upper right uh, stuff So is? up here would be like where it rolls. Yeah. So up here is where it kind of rolls off to the upper shoulder into the back space. Um, yeah. He's actually got really small arms. Um, and this will kind of pull around the edge of his bicep into the inner bicep. Um, and then I've got to figure out something to throw in there too. But it's, it's basically all just skulls and glowy effects monochromatic little pops of purple little pops of blue very nice yeah i like the the limited color and i'm seeing a few artists starting to do that like basically black and gray work with just an accent color um and that's a good look you know when you pull it off right yeah tell everyone that i'm painting looks like daughter is going to join us and do another yeah, landscape i kind of like it yeah, can you All right. I really enjoy doing the landscapes. It's enjoyable. Okay, so who we got in here? Tony. Nice. Is this uh, getting tattooed today? Uh, no, I wish. No, no. This is this is just a, a warming up for uh, my previous design. Um, because yeah, I'm doing a, a little flash for the the autumn season of ah, okay. birds and little animals. So I'm just warming up now. Um, yeah, that's great. I, I really enjoy the, uh, uh, the the little skeleton riding the shoulders of the bird. I, I have not actually seen that with a little songbird before. So that's clever. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've been doing uh, this kind of uh, riding characters for a wee while now. And okay. I'm really enjoying it, to be honest. Uh, it's quite, it's fun and, you know, if people get it tattooed, it's just like the best thing ever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's clever. You know, it's, it's hard to come up with something that's your own that somebody else hasn't already thought of. Yeah, actually. It's, um, I mean, maybe some, somebody did it before me. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> right, but you didn't take it from them. You came up with it on your own. And so it's going to be, yeah. you know, your own unique approach to it. Yeah, and yeah. I just, uh, for what it's worth, as soon as you showed up in a 
wherever it was the the event your style was unique enough that it stood out and it continues to for me cool. I, i'm i'm really glad to hear that from you gabe thank you so much thank you it's uh, way easier to say than do <laughs> okay so who's next uh jason yeah hold on <clears throat> Oh, it signed me out. That's weird. Technology. I thought we were looking at you. Ah. You know what? Well, uh, I was going to say it's not a big deal as long as you can get a pretty decent view. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'm just working on a concept sketch. I'm actually using a couple of Tattoo Smart brushes in this. Uh, thanks, Ross, by the way. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. It looks like a oh, snake brush. Yeah. And yep. One of the serpent brushes, and then um, I think all the way in the back, I've got uh, uh, one of the protoplast arm brushes. Yeah, cool. I see it back there. Yep. Yeah, I really love those protoplast brush sets. Uh, just for generalized layout, working on a concept sketch for a, a sleeve that you know I'm going to pitch out the idea to. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, that's why we made those. It, I think it really helps to, you know, quickly throw down something you can build off of. Oh, without question. Yeah. Well, also that, that is a, that is a structure that has to be pretty like regular and precise if you want it to look good. And mm -hmm. especially as you're adjusting, you know, you want to move over a little bit of the belly. You realize the twist is too loose, and you want to tighten mm -hmm. it. You've got to erase and fix all of that, right? And you know having a tool like that just eliminates a lot of uh a lot of footwork you yeah, still have to be able really to nice that's, that's i, I <laughs> like the thing where you know you can't just go from zero to making brilliant art you know what i mean it's no matter what you still have to know how to draw but having these tools just helps oh i also i paid brush in your cup <laughs> This kitten drank the paint water thing and barked it all over the house. He got in here, drank paint water, and he barked it all over the house, and he got him out of here. So, yeah. Um... Uh, I suppose if I unmute myself, then people will know what's going on. Uh, oh. I was going to I have you highlighted, Guy, and then we'll uh, end with Russ and the holiday. Okay. Yeah. I'm just uh, kind of hazing and, and adding more... Uh, sense of uh, uh different contrast you know i mean like i'm gonna probably haze over this guy a little bit because it's almost as dark as this i'm gonna go a little dark in the foreground too but i'm bringing a little color in i thought i was going to do this with oils but it's not happening that way yet and so now i'm starting to add a little bit of warm green try to you know bring in some of that warmth from the from the sun but yeah this has nothing to do with a tattoo assignment I'm just kind of picking up where I left off last night. Motion. It's cool. And uh, now, Russ, we've got you on. Yeah, cool. So I, I didn't have anything planned, but I was working on this with my live stream with BJ last night. This is um, actually just one of his designs from the free Seasons Greetings set that okay. I stamped out. So I'm just kind of coloring on top of it using the, um, the Spit Shade set, which is like a realistic you know, watercolor set that we made. So I'm just like uh, putting in a light gray wash on Santa here right now. So the uh, the spit shade, if if you don't mind, could you zoom your camera in really close? I'd love to see the texture of that. Yeah. Sure. Let me let me let me show you as I kind of turn some stuff off here. So this piece of paper here is it's based on a photo of an actual piece of paper that was tea stained. Nice. And then we have. The kit comes with like all of these. So these are all the different, so like this block is all the eight by tens. So, you know, for instance, this one has like a really crazy coffee stain on it, but it's all from, you know, real authentic materials. Yep. Yeah. And then the way it works is a paper layer will come with all of this when you open it up. So I've got layers that say like sketch here. There's a few layers for color, black lines and white. And all of these layers, except for the white layer, are all set the same. They're set to layer mode darkened, which helps the uh, 
the color actually look right on the paper. And then the white has some different settings that make white look the way it would look on this type of paper. And it's weird because the texture is actually in two different places. It's like a, I always say it's like a sandwich or a hamburger. Because on top you have these, um, these texture layers that represent the sheen. I'm not sure if you can see that going on and off, but. It, it's getting that, a little lighter and darker. Right, so when it's on, the, um, the paper sheen is, it's, it's like glare from the room. So if you put some black ink down, say like this, let's see. If you put some black down, of course I've got lights in my room. Let me turn those off. I've got those Philips smart bulbs in the ceiling. So I have to use this app. Uh. So yeah, turn the lights off in the room. Okay, now you can see my screen a little better. Yeah. But the, um, the black there, if you look at paper sheen going on and off, you can see the difference. So even with black on a, on a real piece of paper, you would, you know, obviously you would have some reflections from the room. So it's, it's possible to dial that up and down or just, you know, turn it off altogether. And then there's another layer that represents the shadow of the paper and kind of like bakes in some dark from the uh, little divots in the, the surface of the paper. So that's the top layer. And then the bottom layer is just the photo of the paper. So if I take, all of that away, then you've just got a, you know, a pool of black and you can see the, the actual texture from the brush, which was, um, is the other element of it. So this brush is, is made to look like black kind of, or any color bleeding into wet paper. So it's got that sort of messy edge. So how much spread does it have when you, uh, draw on there? Well, with this particular brush, it has, has a good amount. I mean, I'm zoomed in pretty yeah. close and it's set pretty is big. It, but, is it yeah. randomized or is that again, based mm, on some It's based on pressure. Settings. It's based on pressure. And you know, the, if you look here, that is the actual, you know, source of the brush. Okay. And again, that was taken from a real you know, genuine splotch of paint that I made on real watercolor paper and then photographed yep. and, and brought in to make the brush. So I have a number of these different you know, kind of natural sources that I used as I was designing this kit. So there's a lot of different fun stuff in there. Yeah, I think having that kind of authenticity is really important. And uh, that's something that I think that the early digital brush makers didn't quite get. And uh, they just had these kind of random pebbly kind of patterns. And, and you still have those on like the Photoshop you know, default brushes and they're, they're crap, you know, they don't really make any kind of a, a natural feel at all. Yeah. This whole set was made with the idea of just replicating the natural tools. So we have like, um, Sharpie markers, which are really nice kind of fat line to use on a uh, watercolor paper, but you know, they, they run out pretty quick because they, the paper just sucks the ink out of them. Right. So, so we have like a fresh new Sharpie, and then we have a used Sharpie. Yeah, you got to have some of those in your kit. And then we have a dry Sharpie. So it's like way less intense. Yeah. Um, the, the size can change. But um, so we have stuff like that. What else is in there? Um, I mean, this is just a brush that you would use to just apply paint. So it's got a lot of variability with the pin pressure. And you can turn it on its side and it'll get fatter. And then if you switch to the smudge tool, you can grab one of these blender brushes like this one and blend it out as if you have a water brush. Ah, yeah, being able to blend it out after the fact is, is really cool. Of course, that's like a variation on the smudge tool. Yeah, it's, it's basically just using the smudge tool feature, but it's got some, some settings in there that make it work really well for this. Yeah, smudge tool is great. Tell everyone it's snowing here. Yeah, tell everyone it's snowing. Here. So who's got snow? Anyone getting snow in their neighborhood right now? We have a frost. 
but not missing yeah. it. I got a lot of rain. Yeah, nothing here yet. It's trying to snow. There's snow, except it's just not that much of it. Well, got a nine-year-old in the house, so snow is a big topic. <laughs> it's like one of the only things that redeems winter. So we'll see, right? Okay, so just uh, to make sure that we have everything that we need, if everyone could go around and just give us your contact info so that people that are still watching um, or watching the replay will know how exactly how to get a hold of everybody. Yes, yes. Okay, well, um, for starters, Rust here is demonstrating uh, tattoo smart things. And you can just find that at tattoosmart.com, right? And yeah, it's probably the best place to go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of really, really cool products that other people have not thought of or put on the market yet. Uh, Russ has always been a little bit ahead of the curve with this stuff. And uh, he's got a lot of great brushes and tools from various artists like the BJ Betts stuff. Uh, I know he's worked with Damon Conklin and they have a, have a really successful set of, of things. Killian Moon has done a bunch of brushes. Uh, I'm sure it's a much longer list than that. Yeah, it's pretty extensive at this point. And it's only growing. We, we release a new product like every week. So yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to keep track. But yeah, the um, I guess the next phase of Tattoo Smart, what we're really excited for right now is the new website that we're, we're working on behind the scenes. So we hope to launch in hopefully March, we're going to have a whole new uh, insane website to, to house everything. So that's a lot of what I've been working on. Is it just reached a point where it's hard to like organize and, you know, make available all these tools just because there's so many of them? Yeah. It's just overwhelming when you get there. If you haven't really been following it, it's like, right. It's like right. people, people are guess? kind of trapped. They don't know what to get first. And um, so, you know, now, now it's about finding a better, organizational system for everything and, and making it easier to navigate and having a different experience for a first timer versus an experienced customer. Mm, yeah. That's, that's also a tricky thing is, is, you know, you need to be able to serve the needs of, of both and uh, the same website is, you know, not going to offer, you know, different experiences unless you're really clever about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's one of the things we're really excited for because it'll be like a whole, a whole different experience if the website reads your browser and it says that you, you know you're not a customer then you'll have a different experience than someone who's been around a little bit but yeah and as far as tattoo wise i'm ink and dagger tattoo in roswell georgia and uh at russ abbott on instagram okay uh tony how do we get in touch with you um, well, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. My name is Tony Lee Works, um, just like it sounds. And yeah, you, you can find me there and I can reply DMs if you want. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Jason? Uh, so I'm uh, Jason Leeser. I'm from the Inkwell Tattoo in Southampton, PA. And uh, you can get in touch with me at Philly Inc. on Instagram. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to remember. Perfect. Melissa, how do we get a hold of you? Uh, so I'm in Staten, Oregon. Uh, you can find me sync-inc.com. Instagram um, would be M-A-C underscore M-I-S-S-A. Awesome. And then Guy, you want to uh, close this out? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you can always find me at uh, uh, on Insta, and I always try to check my messages at Guy H's and Art. My email is guyomech at gmail.com, G U Y O M E C H at gmail.com. And we're always interested in hearing from people who are down with hosting stuff, live groups like this or anything like that. Any ideas that you have? Uh, we're trying to build up a big library of ideas. So when we have a, uh, our app live and we're able to um, you know, host a lot more live things, we'll have uh, people who are ready. So yeah, we'd love to hear about that. And uh, even just feedback on the things that we're doing here, things you'd love to see more of, anything like that. Um, and of course, uh, we'll, uh, 
anytime we have drawing groups, like, like here, we're not going to be posting like we do with, uh, with our exercises, but uh, anytime we have drawing group groups, we'll have a hashtag tonight. Uh, we've got Andre, which you already mentioned, but uh, that's, that's one where I'm actually going to really approach it as a student and try to try to just, uh, just sit back and learn as much as I can. Uh, every now and then I can draw a pretty decent wave, but they never look good when I look at like the people who do it, you know, for a living. And uh, I've had a little bit of advice from a couple of people, but I look forward to really watching somebody who knows what they're doing uh, walk us through it. So uh, yeah. See you all tonight. Doing? She's doing another landscape. Yeah. Well, I'm going to shut off the stream. People okay. are welcome to stay on the Zoom, but uh, oh, the stream is now. Well, gonna I'm probably going to be cutting out pretty soon myself, but uh, it's been great to uh, to see everybody. And uh, oh yeah, I wanted to. Kaya really wants to show us the speed painting she just did. She learned this uh, palette knife technique.